Hi, welcome back. So, I'm going keto. Almost no carbs, no processed sugars, no listening to my body, no listening to my cravings, and lots of coconut oils and butter. I guess this is the new me. I'm kidding. Welcome to Linda trying the keto diet with a Linda twist. My diet on the regular consists of oats, pancakes, rice, popcorners, every fruit, and jars and jars of peanut butter. One way to describe my diet is probably the exact polar opposite of what a keto low carb diet actually is. The Linda diet is the highest carb diet of all. So I was challenged by some of you to try the keto diet, which is basically when you eat close to no carbs while still eating enough protein, but getting most of your fuel from fats. While this didn't seem like it was gonna be an easy week for me, I was still determined to make even a week without oatmeal or bananas or ice cream a delicious one. Welcome to Keto Day 1. We're making blueberry muffins today with 100% erythrol. I can't make any baked goods without the sugar. Excited. Oh my god, why is it so hard? What? It's literally like a brick. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. What? Please keep in mind that I went into this keto week absolutely clueless. I had no idea what I was doing, okay? I just read a few articles, a few websites, and I was just gonna try my best here. So of course, you can expect some slip-ups, but those are just a part of life, you know? So go easy on me. Here are the basics of keto, from what I understand. This diet tries to force your body into using a different type of fuel instead of relying on sugar glucose that comes from carbohydrates like my oatmeal and bread and the many fruits in my diet. The keto diet relies on ketone bodies, a type of fuel the liver produces from stored fat. Boop, boop. Mm. You didn't even eat it and then you said how true. Mm. But getting the body into this state of ketosis is actually really difficult. You deprive yourself of carbs fewer than 20 to 50 grams of carbs per day. Keep in mind that a banana has about 27 grams of carbs, so basically no bananas for me. From what I've read, you're supposed to eat 75% of your calories from fat compared to 20 to 35% in a normal diet, and it typically takes a few days to reach a state of ketosis, and the days before ketosis has been reached, you have some pretty terrible symptoms called the keto flu, because your body's adjusting to this new energy source, and this keto flu includes side effects like fatigue, low blood sugar, nausea, vomiting, headaches, low energy. Yeah, it doesn't sound fun because it's not. Really nervous. I think the egg was not beaten enough. This is seriously just cheese. I'm really excited. That's fire. I can't believe I'm just eating cheese. That's really good. Push the outside. Actually impressed. I'm so Anyways, excited! Anyways, with the keto diet, there's a lot of fat to ingest and it requires a lot of tracking of foods and macros and every little thing you eat and as you guys know, I'm just not <gasps> about that kind of life. That's so good! No. <laughs> How? Can anyone tell it's keto? Okay. So, I didn't go hardcore keto. Calculating and counting and tracking and I... We don't have a super positive past. So I knew I would be a little bit overwhelmed if I did track and plan every macro entering my body. So I decided to take keto and make it my own. I made keto meals that looked good, sounded appetizing, and ate them until I was satisfied. To be honest, I just wanted to try some keto foods without stressing about counting and reaching ketosis. Because realistically, a week isn't long enough to see the benefits or effects of any type of diet. I was more just in it for the experience. While it wasn't the real keto diet, I was able to taste a lot of delicious and interesting keto foods without all the stress of hitting my daily macros and the intense focus on weight loss. And for some, that may be seen as a waste of a whole week, but for me, it really made this week enjoyable and a lot less painful than it probably would have been. While I definitely did miss my oats and smoothie bowls, keto pizza is pretty freaking delicious. I got it. No, I don't. I mean, why isn't it working? Ow! Ow! I 
cut myself in the food processor. Oh no, are you bleeding? Yes. I mean, this is dangerous. Oh, I did that. Okay, but it wouldn't pulse. Okay, I pressed on. I read something called the lazy keto diet, and I think that's basically what I did. It's kind of like an easier way of doing keto. So yes, like cheating, but I'm not ashamed. The lazy keto diet is where people try to limit their carb intake to 20 to 50 grams a day, but don't really track it or care. So me and me. With lazy keto, people generally follow the same macronutrient breakdown as regular keto, but it doesn't matter where those macronutrients come from. This way I could actually enjoy the food and not be consumed by the numbers. And while some people are gonna hate me for this, this is just the better option for me and my body and my mind. Moving on back to the whole keto flu thing, which is known to attack the body on the second to third day. So I was pretty prepared for this painful experience, and surprisingly for me, it wasn't too, too bad. On the first and second days, we were feeling pretty good, okay? And I was quite surprised because I've heard energy levels are supposed to deplete during the first few days of keto. However, some days were definitely lower energy than others. There were workouts where I would feel a lot weaker and slower and just less energetic, which made sense because carbs are the main source of fuel for our muscles, but I still had a solid workout every day. I just found myself getting tired quicker. I'm eating keto. <laughs> you find is the opposite of keto. I also found that most nights I usually felt pretty lethargic. My eyes would feel heavy, my muscles felt weak, my ability to concentrate on anything, even Netflix, was not the best. So for most days of the week I slept much earlier than usual and for a lot of the day I felt like my mind was kind of just all over the place. Anyways, keto requires a lot of fat. So to help me increase my daily fat intake, I made these fat bombs. First of all, the name fat bomb, kind of aggressive. At first it was kind of scary thinking about how much fat I was actually ingesting, but a way I like to think about it is that fat Fat is just a source of fuel for my body. My body needs fat to function, and there's nothing really scary about it unless you make it scary. Same goes for carbs and fast food or dessert or anything else. Food is fuel. Food is enjoyable and delicious, and all foods can be enjoyed if we stop treating it like the enemy. A fat bomb, but it's more like a fat patty. It's like a peanut butter cup, but like, not really. That's kind of insane. The texture? I like. You know, flu wise, day three was the absolute worst. I was not only lethargic and confused, I was just slightly moody and a terrible human being to be around. My body was probably like, where the heck are my carbs? I think it was like painful for me to keep ignoring my body because I make it like a life goal to practice listening to my body and honoring my body's feelings and cravings through the food and exercise I do, but I couldn't do that with keto. And I wasn't able to be intuitive or listen to the carb cravings my body was begging me to give it. I'd rather live a high carb happy life where my body and my mind feel strongest and happiest instead of, you know, following a diet trend that who knows will be popular for how much longer. But that's just for me, and there's been so many success stories with low carb and keto diets, and it really does work for some people. It's actually pretty good. It's not mashed potatoes, but it'll do. I give this like a seven. Texture is a little weird. Midnight snack. I don't know why, but I'm really hungry. But I think I just want to remind you guys to be gentle with yourselves and your bodies. You don't need to follow any diet or rules if your body doesn't agree with them. If you're feeling tired and lethargic and just down, you don't need to force yourself to work out. If you're really craving something, the best thing you can do is honor that craving. Respect your body's communication with you and build that trust and kindness. No diet or meal plan or macro goal is worth sacrificing your mental health and your overall quality of life or worth missing out on seven days of oats for breakfast. It's just not worth it. Moving on, there are some pretty negative long-term effects that have been studied in people that follow the keto diet. It could cause low blood pressure, kidney stones, constipation, nutrient deficiencies, and put people at an increased risk for heart disease. And the strictness of the keto diet can also cause social isolation. And the restrictiveness is also known to be correlated with disordered eating patterns. Having a diet control me and take away parts of my life is definitely not a diet that I'm down for. So then you're probably like, why Linda? Why are you doing this if you know it's not the greatest way to eat? It's restrictive and you can't eat your beloved oh pancakes. God. Brother, look at my keto bagels. Look how beautiful. The circle in the middle, they're biscuits. I'm so proud. Well, life is short and Linda's curious. It really doesn't hurt to try something out for a week and just see what happens. My goal wasn't to lose weight or to reinforce health claims. I just wanted to experience what it'd be like and I wanted to see what people that follow a keto diet go through. And now coming out of it, I feel quite bad for those people. Wow, 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 wow. That's so freaking good. In all honesty, I can't even taste the bagel because of the topping. Okay, let's try only a bagel. It's 
basically like a round bagel looking thing made all of cheese, which like, how can that not taste good? Damn, this bagel is fricked up. It's abnormally delicious. It's so fluffy. Very successful. So let's talk about what you actually can eat on a keto diet. I strongly believe that everything can belong in a healthy diet, but with keto, nothing really belongs in a diet. I swear the main food groups I ate were meat, coconut oil, and almond flour for a solid week. For the keto diet, some unhealthy, unsaturated fats are allowed, like nuts, which I took full advantage of and added peanut butter to everything. And also fats like avocados, tofu, and olive oil, but saturated fats from oils and butter are what is recommended to be eaten in high, high amounts. Oh, the keto life is awesome. Oh my goodness. Mm. Oh my god. The thing that hurt me the most is that all fruits are rich in carbs. Literally all of them. And fruit is like half of my diet, but they do let you eat certain fruits like berries in small portions. I think I cried multiple times because of this. Oh my god. Why is bacon so good? So the restrictiveness just made me crave the freaking fruit more. This entire week, I just wanted to have smoothie bowls and eat every carb on the planet. And that's what happens when I restrict. My body just wants it more. And I was really brought back to the days where every craving was just responded and retaliated with no. Foods were good and bad, healthy and evil. My diet and my life have been dictated by food for several years and this week was a really good reminder actually to why I don't live like that anymore. While keto put a little dent in my happiness for a week, I did have other things in my daily routine that kept me sane and excited for the day including eating my fat bomb, sleeping, and the new Caroline Gerben Epic Hit workouts. These workouts make my day so much better. 30 minutes of pure pain, intensity, heat, sweat, and did I mention pain? Yep, but definitely my favorite 30 minutes out of my entire day. And something else that's brought me too much happiness is my new skincare routine. So I wanted to thank Function of Beauty for sponsoring today's video. You guys have definitely heard of the personalized shampoo and conditioner Function of Beauty makes, but they've come out with a customizable skincare line too. How freaking crazy. Their serum is personalized towards your individual skin profile, so you'll take a little quiz and ask you questions like what's your skin type, how much makeup you wear, your skin history, and you even get to pick your own skin goals. My personal goals were minimizing pores, reducing shine, and reducing breakouts. The Serum Savior has changed my skincare game, you guys. I've been using it for a few months now, morning and night, and I've never been super picky with skincare, but I can definitely tell a difference now after using Function of Beauty. The serum just has an amazingly light texture, it's not sticky at all, and my skin just feels nourished. This is seriously a product that's actually made for you, 100% custom, and this way you have more control over what ingredients are in your skincare products too. Function of Beauty is dermatologist tested and non-irritating, 100% vegan, cruelty-free, non-GMOs, and there's no parabens or sulfates. So if you want to make your skin a little happier, you can get 20% off the custom serum and a free selfie headband when you click the link below. Saying that I had cravings for carbs this week would be an understatement. I think my body was genuinely confused. And there were several times where I did give in to those cravings. And at first I felt so guilty because it felt like I was letting you guys down and I was letting me down. But not only is keto such a drastic change, even though it was for an experiment, it just wasn't worth being miserable for a week. So when my friends brought me Starbucks or I had the opportunity to enjoy an ice cream, I wasn't gonna say no just because the diet rules didn't allow it. And for some that may be considered a failure because this was a challenge and I didn't follow through, but to me, my slip-ups are a win because listening to your body and your hunger, especially when there are external pressures and rules, is and always should be a win. It's really sad. I can't eat these. My mom said they were so sweet. Life's too short. Mm. My biggest craving during this week was the protein powder in my oatmeal. Oh my gosh, the amount of times I reached for my oats is embarrassing. And of course, built bars and every fruit, like the grapes in my fridge, have never been so appealing in my life. And bread and cereal and craft snacks. There were so many times I'd go into the pantry to grab them and I would have to have like this insane self-control to contain myself and walk away. And honestly, life's just too freaking short to physically force yourselves to put away the ice bagels. cream or the chips. Exquisite. It's definitely not the way that I want to live and it's definitely not worth a few pounds that may or may not have been lost. Amazing. Therefore, keto is ultimately not realistic or sustainable for me. A diet that restricts fresh fruits and vegetables? Like, I don't know why that would ever be promoted or exist. All the foods that my body was craving while I was doing keto week were foods that were beneficial for me and my overall health, filled with nutrients and antioxidants, and I forced myself not to eat them, and for some reason, that just makes absolutely no sense to me. As a society, I feel like we literally go through waves of fearing a certain macronutrient to all of a sudden praising them. Like, one minute we're scared of fats, then we need to hide from carbs, or we can only eat carbs in the morning.
morning or this food before the other. It's all so confusing and all so temporary. Keto could just be another phase, another trend. Carbs have been the enemy for too long. The amount of times I hear people hating on pasta and rice and even bread and bananas. The amount of times I hear people stressing over eating too many carbs. And sometimes it even makes me second guess my order of pasta with more garlicky, cheesy carbs on the side. But carbohydrates are an important energy source for your body. And not only are they fuel for our muscles and our brain, if it's a food that you love, it's a fuel for a fulfilling life Yay. too. It's good. Actually? Yeah. This is so good. I don't really care about the texture. Mm. I think if anything, this is like kind of nicer. This is so good. I rate 9.8 out of 10. I rate a solid 10 out of 10. Mmm. Oh, it looks so good. You get that? Mmm. Mmm. The strawberry is strong, but it's good. I feel like when we think about carbs, we usually think about pasta, pizza, bagels, fast food, but we usually don't think about the fact that fruits, milk, yogurt, cheese, and beans are also carbs. I feel mm -hmm. like anytime we overemphasize or hyperfocus on one aspect of nutrition, like cutting out carbs, we lose the big picture. The idea of balance and health and life and food. We lose the big picture that all foods can be incorporated into a balanced, healthy diet. And I truly believe that in order to live a happy, fulfilling, whole, life, we need to be eating a whole, fulfilling, balanced diet that works for you and that is inclusive of every kind of food or snack and version of oatmeal that makes you feel full food-wise and also makes you feel full happiness-wise. Wow. Oh, that's crazy. Wow. Oh my god. Oh, look at that salmon. That's beautiful. Let's try the asparagus. <laughs> Mmm, the salmon, the parmesan, and the butter. Mmm. So you're really messing out. I will miss me. Was it like a harsh breakup? These are addicting. The peanut butter. I'm sorry, buddy. You can't eat this. Mmm, so good. This is so yes, the major thing that was lacking for me this week was balance because there was none of it. Even though I really try to ketofy everything from cheesecake to pancakes to muffins and hash browns, you really can't fake a potato. And I'm all for adding more nutrients to my favorite foods and subbing for more nutrient-dense alternatives. I do it all the time, adding some chia seeds and swapping for higher protein options, but cauliflower mash is not mashed potatoes, no matter how much you mash it. <laughs> looks a lot less appetizing outside of the pot. This with some noodles would be delicious. Noodles are not keto friendly. And I don't have zucchini noodles or cauliflower rice. This is dinner. It's a hell of a ride. That is delicious. I wish I had pasta. Holy sh that's so good. This with pasta would be so insane. Oh, mm, I wish I had pasta. Can I please make some pasta? I might just have to do it. No. Don't do it. The damage has been done, dessert time. And I'm sorry, but zucchini noodles are not noodles. It's just not the same, and life's too short to pretend that it is. Life's too short to not just eat ice cream with your cookies because carbs and sugars have turned into the devil of all things. It's okay to eat sugar and candy and carbs and fruits in abundance. And it's okay to eat salmon and coconut oil and butter too. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to always be one or the other. I did add ice cream. I had to. I miss the balance in my life. Balance as in some cake, like real sugary carbed cake, along with some fats and proteins. That's when I feel the most balanced, between fueling my body for health and fueling my life to actually live. Because it should always be both. Because there is a difference between health and living. And we should really be doing both, not one or the other. These look freaking insane. Oh my god. How soft that is. Amazing. 20 out of 10. So muffin. So muffin. Why is it so good? But I must admit, I was extremely impressed with all the foods that could be ketofied. It made this week so fun and so much more bearable. Like keto pizza? Are you kidding me? That's crazy. And who knew cheese and almond flour could create such an abundance of different things? Here, I got it. I got it. I got it. No, no, no. You gotta do the knife thing. Trust me, trust me. My hands are too oily. Just hack. Careful, please get off. Did you? Ugh. Oh, it's so good. Oh, 
Are we doomed? No, I'm gonna get it. Oh, you're gonna break your arm. Yeah. It just shows me it never hurts to try something new and there's always a lesson to be learned and something to be gained out of an experience even if what you gained isn't what you originally expected. You never know, you could be pleasantly surprised by fake Bye. pizza or Bye. disappointed, but yeah, at least now I know I prefer okay, real pizza. Okay, go off on real the flour crust. pizza. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Okay. It's pretty fine. Mm. Okay. That's good. Mm. Bye. <gasps> Why is he an essay? Can I read it? No. I'm gonna laugh. No. You have to wait for him to finish something. Oh. Ah! Wait, this is show you read it. Though. You don't read it. I know. Okay, then let's read it. No. That's fire. That's good. It's like melting in my mouth. I'm just overwhelmed. 9.5? I'm here, ugly side piece. You're so mean. I will eat you anyways. In the end, whether people do keto just as an experiment, or try to be healthier, or to lose weight, or whatever, I truly believe there are better ways to be healthy and lose weight than cut out complete food groups. The keto diet is very popular among the dieting community because it results in a pretty quick decline on the scale, but those numbers are typically just you losing a bunch of water weight. And I think it's important to note that the keto diet isn't a miracle fat burner or weight loss strategy. One large 12-month study that compared the effectiveness of a healthy low-carb diet with a healthy low-fat diet detected did no significant differences in weight loss. So after all that, do I recommend the keto diet? Definitely not. But I mean, if you're up for the challenge and just kind of curious like me, go for it. It's quite the experience and enjoyable if you like lots of fats and meats and don't think you're going to be missing out on pancakes or, you know, carby amazingness. But I am definitely a carb girl and a proud one at that, so I will never be doing this again. Almond flour is great and all, but it really just doesn't measure up to real bread or bagels or muffins, you know. I'm sorry. That's just the truth. So in good. Bacon. So fire. So fluffy. I could eat this every morning. Remember guys, balance is key. Listen to your body and you know, everything in moderation is a part of a healthy diet. While this diet may work for some people, it's just not for me at this moment in time or probably any other time in my life. I need carbs and oats and random snacks here and there that aren't veggies and fat bombs to fuel my workouts and study sessions. But I don't regret that I tried it, you know, it was fun. And I accept those that love keto, but I realized I'm happy with who I am and where I am and what I eat. I love the body that I have and that's a body that needs to eat lots and lots of carbs and more chocolate and peanut butter than most. Yes, so I'm proud to be able to say that I don't feel like I need any diet to feel like a healthier or better or stronger version of me. I am healthy and I am strong and I am worthy just as I am regardless of the food I ate yesterday. I am still me regardless of the changes in the sizing of my clothes. My worth is not equal to the amount of carbs I cut out or any less if I actually listen to my cravings. I am enough as I am and at the end of the day you just have to do it for you. Overall, while the meals from this week were actually pretty delicious, you best believe the first thing I did after this week was over was go make myself the largest freaking bowl of oatmeal ever. <laughs> My final message to all of you, I love carbs, I always will. I love you guys, and I always will. And I'll see you guys all next time. Bye.